Like, yeah. and I think a lot of women who are, so like you started out this podcast by saying like Amanda works so hard, like, you know, she's like really, you know, on her shit, et cetera. And I think a lot of women like myself suffer from smart woman, dumb girl syndrome. Explain that. Ooh, girl, I will leave this room. <laughs> <laughs> and what I consider smart woman, dumb girl syndrome to be is that we are like book smart. We are even like, um, we are savvy like we might be business career smart. driven yeah yep. mm -hmm. but we're not heart smart mm -hmm. so and that doesn't mean that you don't have emotional intelligence what that means is that like there really is a dynamic to like being in relationships with like cisgendered heterosexual men that like some women have mastered mm -hmm. and that are able to understand and like if you didn't have the right people around you like yeah. growing up you kind of never like learn those skills you know like i have a lot of skills <laughs> i never had those skills i feel that so deeply and more importantly i think often we skip past all of the things that make relating so challenging for the smart woman because it's our mindset and the ways that we're viewing our relationships or love in entirety that has to be completely combed through when i spoke to or listened to other people talk about relating it still felt like a brush through because after hearing and experiencing all of these amazing tools, I was still left stuck in my own personal experiences. I didn't know exactly how to bridge the gaps. For me, without the proper tools or someone available to me telling me what is okay, where I could have done a better job at communicating, how to get a better outcome out of my partner. If I don't have those things, it's still very hard to navigate. And I think oftentimes, I would lie to myself about the experience that I was giving people, but it wasn't necessarily the truth. Sometimes, I think as women, we like to tell the stories that make us sound like the bigger person, when in reality, we can be just as messed up. And after years of the same old things and repeating the same cycles, it takes a hit at your confidence a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. We begin to second guess ourselves and our abilities to receive love. Saying things like, well, maybe if I was this, then I would receive that. Or maybe if I had the mentorship or the guidance in XYZ, I would receive a different outcome. Maybe if I had this level of provision at a younger age, I would better be able to discern the X, Y's, and Z's of unhealthy relationships, to not choose them anymore. And maybe I'm setting these expectations too high, because you can have all of those things and still not have great experiences in relationships. No one is exempt from the bad experiences in relationships, but everyone has a choice. For the smart woman, she has to change her mind. She has to change what she chooses. Forget about the past bank of experiences that she's always had. But to start fresh and start where you are now is extremely important. I think the harsh part about this is if we don't become a complete villain in a cis hetero male's story by owning our femininity and not compromising or settling any parts of it, we slowly become the villains in our own story when we know things don't feel right but we never truly take accountability to the part that we play in our experience slowly settling into our grave of being mishandled or taken for granted all because we were present enough to see it all but not brave enough to do really anything about it and then we come possessed in the mind with all of the times that we should have left or we should have let go but we chose to stay and it haunts us. Why did you stay? Why wasn't that last thing or the very first sign of incompatibility enough for you to let go? That is what I want to come through today. And it may be a triggering topic, so I don't want to make you upset. But if we don't talk here, I guess what I'm saying is where else could you go? So pause it, grab your snacks, because I think this is going to get really good. Welcome to the Ron Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I'm your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started.
The smart woman can figure out anything. She's ambitious, she's courageous, she's strategic, and can do her best to make it work anywhere. With the asshole at her job, with the resources not really being all there, regardless, she shows up. She works hard for herself, for her family, the people she loves, and works even harder in her relationship. But does she actually know when enough is enough? I think the smart woman has good intentions towards her love. She knows that with time and with a little elbow grease, you can work to your desires. Things just take time. Unfortunately, in the world of relating and relationships, this does not necessarily guarantee a positive outcome. In the realm of compatibility and having soul connection that you're proud to stand before God and devote yourself to one day, it's not something that you can just curate. You cannot curate an honest and deep connection. It's either something that you have or you don't. It gets better and deeper with time, but if it's not there and it wasn't there in the beginning, there is no convincing yourself that it's real. And if you don't, why are you trying so hard to convince yourself otherwise? What do you believe about yourself if you don't? That you're undesirable or hard to love, too much, too complicated? Anyone that has ever instilled that in your mind never really met your standard anyway. So why would you let the people who were never even your standard or the standard to penetrate your mind, to change the way that you view of yourself or your worthiness of love? But see, the smart woman is really good at recognizing patterns and sometimes she traps herself in the lists and the pros and cons and the analytics of what makes a relationship good. But deep down, we know when it's not right. In our spirit, we know. But because our minds and our mouths get us through so many things in life, we assume that it can get us through incompatibility, and it can't, and it will not. I think most smart women chase our tails with incompatible partners because it gives us something to do. Smart women crave stimulation and we see sometimes error or challenges and speed bumps in the relationship as just another thing. We put it in the category with all of the other hard things in our lives and we take it all in stride. And unfortunately, we settle where there's no need. When I got to the root of why I took so many challenging scenarios and called it love, I think it started very, very young. I think I just wanted the person or the idea of a specific person more than I wanted to accept that they were not compatible to me. I thought that that made me a good person. Also, if you grew up being around people that you just genuinely didn't favor, you develop ways to just sit in it and be okay with it because genuinely there was nothing you could do about it. I think maybe I thought that the wisdom gained by all of the hard conversations and utter embarrassment would make me better for it. It would ground me in a way, make me more durable for this really hard life. And eventually down the line, I would have this union, this love after hard work and compromise. And I only get challenged by that when I see so many people my age, younger or older, that have decided to find love and get married and they're like, this has been the easiest decision or easiest guest I've ever made. And I'm like, dang, so yes, it is easy with the right person, got it. Have I been viewing this all wrong? Compatibility is just so tricky. Right? Because what works for some may not work for most and vice versa. I think for this smart woman, it will be in her best judgment to take a gamble on her no and her unsettling feelings over taking a gamble at a complete stranger and giving benefit of the doubt to people who haven't built really good enough rapport. 
Unfortunately, sometimes the only ways to even be compatible with certain people is to be the dumb, unconcerned, lazy, and dirty version of yourself to make them feel better. I think the smart woman knows this, so instead of lowering herself, she tries to pull them up. And I mean, go to the gym all you want, but you're not going to do the heavy lifting of raising a man. And what happens here is... They're pulled into a frequency that they can't survive in, and when a person is struggling to survive, they resent you for dragging them to a place that they can't survive in, and because it's not for them, they will sabotage or become mean, and you think it's a form of protest, but really, they're just kind of gasping for air, trying to get back to where they were, and some people are just not meant to meet you where you are, and are you really okay with that? Are you done being a martyr for the men that you were never meant to have? Even enough to see that it's not their fault and it's yours for going too far, too deep, too long in relationships with a person you always knew was probably not meant for you. And sometimes I have to stop and think back in the situations in my past where I chose something that I knew didn't meet or match the future that I wanted. I had this imagery a couple of days ago about a bird with a broken wing. And you see a bird that has sprained its wing and you bring it in to love it and you make it strong again in hopes that you get to keep it, in hopes that it wants to keep you. After this encounter with you, it's flying around and it's in its power and it's shitting on your furniture and making a nest out of your shower head. And you think like, this is the thanks that I get for bringing my love and the bird can't apologize or even give a gesture of remorse but it can be set free and you ask yourself was it really love in the beginning if I wanted so much in return how much could I ever expect back from this little bird maybe all the love I was ever meant to experience this time was in the ways the bird trusted my abilities to be its aid. And just like love, it'll fly out and in a new way, in again. But will that be enough? I think smart women like us are insufferable to our partners because our intelligence ruins a very important part of the chase. When a man is on the hunt, the chase. It has to come with a sense of allure, mystery, a little dazzle, that regrettably, girls like us are just too aware to entertain. We like to know everything. And when a man is honest, he will willingly tell you, and this ruins the sparkle. It's like, okay, you like the energy, we can rock but you have created multiple broken homes. Or, like, you're all right, you're smart, you're creative, but you resent women and you low-key want to be one because you think we have it easier. Or, you use women to distract yourself from ways that you are financially unstable. Whatever it is, this kills it. But we also need to know, is the smart woman smart enough not to play the nice girl that is okay with something we know good and well we can't build a future with, at least for right now. For the smart woman, we hate to be sold a dream, but we are always buckling to it like a dumb little girl. I think it's because there's a part of us that still believes in magic and a person's potential. It's like you can have faith in a person's potential without putting yourself in the middle of it. You are just setting yourself up to be a piece of toilet paper, literally. So after a while, you've seen all there is. You've run your analytics. You put all the cues together and ask yourself, does this fit my plans? My plans, not theirs. I think women love being considered in a man's plans, but if the plan is made by someone that doesn't really consider you as a person, will it ever be fulfilling or is it even a kind gesture? 
I'm not gonna lie, when I heard the Cam Newton thing, I wasn't surprised by it, and I really don't have much feelings about it, but I'm pretty sure all of the women in his life felt special by just being considered and planned for in his life. And sometimes you get so wrapped up in, in this fairy tale of a man with power considering you to be a part in that. I think what's only damaging is when you realize that you're only a small part, not the entire full piece, you know, it's, it is a little disheartening, you know, you think that with who you are and the entirety of you as a woman and you try to do all the things and fit the needs, you assume that it will be enough, but when a man is empty, there's nothing that will fill the gap. They're just going to take what they can from you. They already got what they needed, and then they'll move on to the thing. It's like a tornado. And it's so unfortunate how many, you know, amazing, intentional, smart, beautiful, and nurturing women get sucked into the tornado of just never being enough, you know. Having it all, but still never being enough. It's hard seeing a woman that has it all still be more of a possession in a man's life than an actual, like, companion, you know, a partner. And sometimes we think that by us sticking around, it would help. It will help them see love in a fresh and exciting way or hold them accountable to the people they say they want to be when in the early stages they're talking about what they want and what they want to become through the union and you realize that with time it's like that's never really what they wanted they just wanted you to be convinced by that so they can receive what they wanted from you and it's dangerous I think when a man is no longer able to paint the fairy tale about who they are as a protector provider or emotionally mature confidant through life there's just so many ways that they can respond either they take full responsibility And they use that as a moment, an opportunity to walk differently through their lives for themselves, ultimately. And also because they have a woman as a witness. Or they can make you their enemy and come in competition with you. It's very hard to trust a person that takes their awakening and an open window to do better as a form of attack or bullying. Because they will always resent you for acknowledging the very thing that could help them and it's childish, and ultimately, that person does not have the best leadership skills. I remember I was in college, and my partner told me that they used another girl to write a paper, and they thought that when they told me I was going to be like, oh, cool, I was like, you're an idiot. Like, I I was so disappointed. Not that that's not cool, but it's like, that was just lame like maybe I just am into people in their power it's like even the person that they chose like they the person that they chose wasn't really the smartest cookie in the cookie jar right so I'm just like what you look even more dumb and it made me look dumb because I chose you to be my partner it's like I don't want anyone to put their future into the hands of someone else by allowing an idiot to do their work that was who like I after that I saw them completely different that was that was the one thing where I'm like I'm not even a nerd like that but you're an idiot bro like anyway or the last thing is they start from scratch but with new people and they never really change and they just do everything possible to you until you leave because they're never going to say they want you to leave if they're still receiving the benefit of having you around and they end up hating you for trying to still be in a relationship and resent you even more because they don't see themselves being with such a low life that would allow a person to handle them the way that they have handled you that one is tough I find myself in those situations a lot. I think when you witness a person not try, not care, I'm the type of person that just wonders why. Like, 
I still would care. Like, I would never want to see you cry. I would never look at someone I cared about, see them cry, and feel like that didn't matter to me. But when it happens to me, I'm just like, dang, like, what the heck? Like, it's crazy. It's like as you grow older and want to build a life, you have to say, wait, is this personal liability to the life that I want to have as my own person and the ways that I want to live? And do I love myself enough to choose that open promise that I gave myself over this companionship? It's tough. And as I'm approaching 30 in a couple of days also, um, I'm just more at this crossroads. Like, y'all, I was listening to Frank Ocean's Blonde, and it's such a timeless, like, body of music and I always equate the blonde album to autumn like the autumn season it's just something very crisp in the air about the sound and I like to listen to it and have my windows down and just really really like be in my zone because I'm a terrible driver anyway I remember when the album first dropped and how old I was and where my mind was and now that I'm almost 30 the sound resonates so much more like the poetry the metaphors anyways i bring that up because i got to the song siegfried and it's just a sound to the polarity of my mind and where it's at right now this world's expectation of having the cookie cutter two kids in a swimming pool or live in the truth of your spirit's call for you to be free and for someone like me, like an artist, I see families or people where society says they should be. And I'm like, yikes, like I get nightmares about that. Like that's scary for me. It takes a lot of bravery to be in a union or have a family. It takes a lot for me to even conceptualize waking up and having that life, like a twilight zone. I know that I'm like jumbling around with my words, but I feel like it would be a hell if I woke up in a house and had all of the things, the house, the kids, the swimming pool, but I never lost this insatiable itch to explore and be everything everywhere all at once. And I'm just like, wow, it's like, I love Frank Ocean so much. That's like so crazy that, uh, I don't know, love him down. Um, but moving on. All of the things that we must consider in our relationship to feel comfortable with where it's going, it's a lot. And it changes the ways that we view love or even our life. One bad relationship could change a lot of things. It can change the way that you view your life. And we work ourselves to a pulp, all for love to become more of a business strategy than it is a divine encounter that you have with a complete stranger. So what do we believe? The love that exists in our mind? or the love that our experience is telling us that this is all there is. And this, unfortunately, has made me a little jaded, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't help me show up in the best ways to my partner either, because maybe I'm a little bit more agitated or a little less affectionate and forgiving, because this shit don't look like my dream anyway, so why does my behavior matter? I'm more direct, I'm more cold, and because I fear wasting time, I don't let anything go unsaid. I think approaching my 30s, I'm slowly coming into my real princess era. Like, real princess era. Like, this means I have a responsibility to preserve myself. To preserve all of the sweet, loving, and soft, nurturing parts of myself. I think all of this time, I wanted passion and devotion and fire because I have a lot of water in my chart, so I need fire. Now, I just want vitality. I want things that instill my growth, not my further decay. With the intense suffering and overworking, things that just are not meant for work and like passionate, deep BS that I have to slowly work my way out of. There's just not a lot of work left in me for relationship. I want to take better care of myself and my mind. And as a woman, the best ways I can do that is if I slow down. And this means that in my relationship, I work like a smart woman, not like a hard one. I don't know. What about you? 
let me know in the comments what is your age and at this age that you're in now what is love to you describe it in a couple of words Thank you all so much for watching and to making it to this far into the video. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. Follow me on Spotify at the Ron Half Podcast. Also on Apple Podcast as well. And I hope to see you all in my next one.